Hey, welcome back to the Kiefer's Hot Rod Shop YouTube channel. I'm Nick Kiefer. In this episode, we're going to check out how I assembled and wired this guitar. Uh, plenty of pieces to put together, so I hope you all enjoy this look at it. Alright, so I'm going to start taking a look at uh, wiring and, and uh, controls here. Um, to go along with all the other Fender Genuine parts I'm using on this, I've got this nice uh, control plate which will hold this uh, CRL lever switch and um, this is a pretty nice unit it's a uh, three-way tele switch um, and then I've got a pair of uh, CTS uh, 500k potentiometers here um, so oh and these are smooth shaft I'm using traditional uh, telecaster knobs which have set screws so I'm gonna um, assemble these onto the plate and start some of the wiring um, some of it you can do out of the guitar other parts on tellies you have to do in the guitar just because the pickup wiring has to go through the body so well, check this out alright here's the wiring diagram for the guitar that I have uh, drawn out. Um, I ended up um, using uh, volume, tone, and the selector switch. Um, just a single volume and I'm doing something tricky here with the uh, selector switch. That's one cool thing about a um, tele switch is every point on the switch is isolated. Um, <clears throat> so the strat switch um, it has just as many terminals eight but in some positions it combines um, adjacent pairs so with the tele switch that never happens because it's a three position and you can do cool uh, stuff like this I want to see if any of you can figure out um, what I'm what I'm doing here um, these are the master pins on the switch and then these are the three positions bridge middle and neck and i'll show y'all uh how it works when i put it all together and, and test the uh circuitry um using an amplifier but i've got the control plate set up with the potentiometers and the switch here that's what I'm going to be working on next, and I'm going to run all of the uh, wires that just go between the potentiometers and the uh, switch at this point. And then later when I get everything in the guitar, I'll hook up all the pickup wires. Another thing I like to use is these um, orange drop capacitors. They're a uh, relatively traditional capacitor, um, but high quality. Uh, this one is a 22 microfarad. It'll say 223K there at the bottom left. Um, I'm going to install that on the tone uh, potentiometer. And um, I prefer wiring with uh, cloth pushback wire. Um, it's, it's really neat stuff. Um, it's uh, old school, and that's one reason I really like it. But also, it's really convenient. Um, kind of hard to do with one hand, but you can push the cloth back. There you go. Um, and after you solder that connection, you can actually um, kind of push the wire uh, cloth back over um, part of the connection to... Uh, you know, insulate it from anything it might touch if, if need be. Um, I really like this stuff and you can get it uh, in all sorts of different colors from Stuart McDonald. And there might be other suppliers as well, but um, just kind of things I like to use. That's kind of the difference when you uh, build a custom electric guitar. Um, you can you put high quality components in and the sound is better um, 
you know, capacitors and stuff like that and wire, you might not be able to tell, but, but potentiometers and switches, um, high quality switches last longer and are less noisy. Um, and also, um, all this stuff feels really good. You know, the switch has a nice tick to it and these high quality capacitors have a nice tactile, um, uh, range uh, that you can feel um, the knob doesn't just fly all over the place you know it, it really has a nice uh, kind of manual feedback to it and um, also perform in a very true manner you won't just kind of lose all of your tone um, right after you start turning the thing and, and volume like a cheaper uh, mini uh, potentiometer, anything like that. Um, of course, you could do a lot with cheaper stuff too. Um, you know, if you're just having fun with it. But um, it's one of those areas where you can spend just a little extra and and get a lot more. Going to be working on uh, setting some of this stuff up to uh, solder together, and um, and then. Uh, Later on, I'll be putting this in the guitar along with the pickups and uh, solder everything together there. So, looking forward to that, and I will show you the process as I go through it. All right, I started soldering. I uh, added some ground wires, um, one for the output jack and another just to bridge over to this potentiometer. Um, these are both bolted to the, you know, chromed um, control pit plate there, um, so they're grounded, but I just like to make sure with that, uh, make sure the path is really clean and direct. I've also added a, um, a uh, positive output wire, this white one here, and I went ahead and, and soldered them up to this uh, output jack. Um, this is a very special output jack. Um, it's a mono jack. It kind of looks like a, a stereo jack, but it's from Pure Tone. And um, you can see right there, multi-contact output jack. Um, these are really awesome. They, um, they uh, really secure the cable in them nicely. It's... Uh, it's a really firm grip it has on it, and um, it kind of avoids any, you know, bad connection or uh, accidental pulling out of the cable when it's plugged into the guitar. Um, they're really nice, and I just tend to use these uh, whenever I uh, build a guitar. So all that's left to do is... Uh, add one uh, ground wire to go to the bridge for the string ground so this thing doesn't uh, hum or buzz and um, just add the uh, pickup wires that'll mostly wire into the switch and ground to the potentiometer here um, and I'll have to do that when I install everything in the body so um, we'll uh, we'll check that out in a little bit but uh, so far, this is uh, this is the wire, and it's looking pretty good. Parts assembly. Another genuine Fender part that I'm adding to this build is this cable furl uh, or jack furl. Um, this is pretty nice. It comes with the uh, the little clip that goes inside of the body and um, the, the nut and washer. Um, and I'm going to be installing this little clip using a Stuart McDonald Telejack installation tool. All right, so here's a quick little look at how the installation tool works. Um, the little clip is installed in there, and as that Allen socket-headed uh, bolt is tightened, it's going to squeeze this die against the body of the tool, um, spreading that clip and it'll just jam into the wood and um, be secured in the body. 
Here's a little look at the furl that's going to um, kind of stack onto this piece, um, the uh, clip, and kind of dress the hole in the side of the body. Um, in comparison to the tool, it's, it's very similar. Um, with the o-ring resting against the outside of the body just like the uh, kind of the lip of that furl um, so you can see how this is going to work and then the jack's going to go in behind all that and bolt through both of those so I'm going to insert the tool with the clip in it uh, into the jack hole of the body and what I'm going to do is hold those flats with a wrench and tighten that Allen socket head bolt with the Allen key and uh, secure that little clip in the wood of the body. All right, cool. So here's that little clip uh, installed in there, and that's just going to uh, secure the jack and the, the jack furl um, in place when it's all bolted together. So that did a pretty nice job. It's real easy to use, and um, that, should, uh, that should work. It's jammed in the wood there as you can see. All right, cool. I just used this six flute countersink here. It's a 90 uh, degree, it gives you 45 and 45. Um, just to uh, take the edge off of that hole a little bit. And um, as you can see, there's you know a good little fillet under there. But this thing fits right down in there nicely. And you can kind of see that clip in there too and that's going to clamp together when the jack bolts in so that looks pretty sweet and um that's going to be uh that's going to be nice for when it's time to install the electronics i've taken the neck down from the painting rack and now it's time to uh do a number of things to it uh primarily um wet sanding and polishing um gonna be very careful on this not to burn through any of the clear lacquer um, the uh, lacquer on the neck is a little thinner in some places and um, um, it's a smaller area so it's just gonna be really concentrated really concentrated uh, wet sanding and polishing um, and then uh, then I'll move on to mounting the tuners and and all that sort of stuff. Uh, one of the first things I like to do after unmasking it, um, unmasking a neck, is to go ahead and take a long block with some uh, fine grit paper. Let's see, I've got 400 on this right now. That'll work. I might go to 600 after. But I just like to round the edge a little bit. Now, this is for a rosewood fingerboard. Um, on a maple fingerboard you want to keep your lacquer on this stuff and just scrape the frets off um, but on the rosewood it's nice to have just a nice raw finish where the lacquer tapers um, into the wood and also it's good to polish the edges of the frets so they're more comfortable to play so I'm gonna start with that and then um, go right on into uh, wet sanding
And here's a little look at that first step. You can see when you start to get rosewood on the paper, um, the, the dark is the fret material and then the brown is the rosewood. But I just barely sand into the finish, um, only on the rosewood portion of the side there. And it just helps to polish the edges of the frets up and all that. So um, the next step um, will be individually taking some fine paper and just dressing those edges of the frets and the fingerboard just so they're more comfortable to play. Once you've uh, kind of dressed the edge of the fingerboard there, um, it's good to uh, dress the edges of the frets. So I've, this is actually some 600 grit which I folded over and I'm just kind of polishing the very edge of the fret just a little bit um, just to uh, make it so that it doesn't have any sharp edges. Ended up uh, putting this together. It's like a split in half uh, paint stirring stick with some uh, 600 grit paper stuck to either side and folded over. And it gave me a lot of really great surfaces just for polishing the edges of these frets. And uh, now the next step is to uh, wet sand this. I think I'm going to start with 1,000 and see if that gets gets it nice and flat, just so I don't have to be quite as intrusive with the 800. Um, but I'm going to go through the uh, grits and compounds, and um, I'm leaving the playing surface um, just in like 1,200. I'm not going to polish it so it doesn't get sticky and glossy but I'll be uh, polishing the headstock and uh, like the edge down where it goes into the body and all that kind of stuff. I've been working with 1000 grit here and I've gotten all the flat areas sanded out. Not going too crazy. Um, that's got a little bit of naphtha on it still. But um, just the, the flat areas, just kind of been working them with a little uh, straight wood block and um, and my finger just a little bit um, not trying to dig in and make it uneven but just trying to get everything nice and smooth now I'm gonna very carefully wet sand the round parts a little bit and then go on to 1200 and uh, get ready to uh, polish the parts that are gonna be shiny all right I've got the whole neck sanded out in 1200 and uh, one thing I like to do is uh, block sand this area where um, the bottom of the neck touches the inside of the uh, neck cavity on the body uh, just so it has a nice flat uh, contact surface for uh, sound waves to travel through. Um, and then after that, I'm going to work on polishing the uh, visual parts of the neck. Um, got the front all in 1200 as well and so we'll make that shiny and then it'll be time for some uh, assembly and I blocked that area out nice and flat with some 600 on this little dura block here um, just works really nice and uh, now it should made up against the body uh, nice and solidly all right cool got it all polished up in uh, medium compound um, left the neck just sanded, but, uh, or the, the part that, you know, the playing surface, but got the ends all polished up and, uh, now it's time to go on to, uh, some fine polish and make this thing super shiny. All right. Went over it with the fine and it's looking super shiny. So just going to hit it with a little bit of a uh, swirl remover, uh, just as a final step and, uh, and then uh, it'll be time to mount this thing up and start setting it up for uh, tuners and all that kind of stuff. But it is looking awesome. All right, looking excellent. Super slick and uh, ready for some tuners. All right, and here are the tuners that I'll be installing on this telly. Um, these are Godo or Gado, however you'd like to pronounce them. Um, Japanese copies of the old clue songs that uh, Fender used. Um, they look the same. They're really high quality and work nicely. Um, the only main difference being they don't say uh, clue song or clue song deluxe 
uh, down the middle of the uh, the stripes here. But um, being vintage style tuners, they use uh, furls, and these actually press into the front of the headstock in the holes. Um, so the next step I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this ream. Um, it's a 3 8 ream, which is a little oversized, but it's going to allow me to taper these holes to accept these furls um, without cracking the lacquer around where they go in. And also, I'm going to taper them just so that they slide in and press in just the last little bit. Maybe, like, for instance, the distance of the uh, non uh, spline part of that insert. Warmoth actually did a really cool um, uh, video on the build of a double neck uh, guitar um, and those guys go through a lot of the detail of installing these. Um, so for more information um, you could go check out their stuff um, and once again that's, uh, that's who I got this neck and body from. Um, good good high quality stuff and uh, they've got some really good information out there too so I'm gonna work on uh, using that ream just to taper these holes and uh, get these furls pressed in um, then it'll be time to set these up and uh, start drilling pilot holes for the uh, screws that that hold them in there and uh, keep them straight I'm just working on chamfering these holes with this ream here and um, I want to show you kind of how these fit in there. So they slide in most of the way, um, but then they just press that last little bit. Um, and, you know, you want to make sure they're, they're secure in there. But the reason for this is kind of twofold. Um, you know, one is just so you don't crack the lacquer as it goes in. Um, you know, if you try to spread that, uh, freshly painted hole apart, it's going to crack the paint and um, cause problems. The other is just for the wood itself. Um, you you want to avoid cracking, especially up by the, you know, E-tuner area um, and all that. So I just want to make sure that these go in there just enough that I can press them and they'll stay in nicely and securely but again I want to avoid uh, cracking the wood or the paint and it's also a good idea to go ahead and um, use a countersink and I just do this by hand and just run it around there just for the same reason to avoid cracking the paint um, you, uh, you'll also see when I go to put in these screws and the pit guard screws and stuff I'll, I'll run a really small countersink and just kind of deburr the paint around the hole uh, in a similar fashion to this. But I'm going to uh, carry on with this and then we'll uh, stick those furls in and then start lining up the tuners. All right, great. These are all chamfered and deburred and now it's time to press those in. You don't want to hammer them in. Um, if you do, use a piece of wood between them and the hammer, obviously, but um, it's best to press them in with a arbor press or by hand um, or something like that. Just want to avoid shocking anything too much. But I'm going to put them in and then uh, we'll check it out. All right, looking sharp. I just pressed them in by hand using a wooden block. Um, you know, nothing real crazy. Just kind of push down on it. And uh, that's kind of one of the beauties of... Uh, uh, countersinking it. Now it's time to very carefully drill pilot holes for these screws and uh, put everything together. So the big thing here is um, to drill the hole for the screw right in the middle of where the screw needs to go and also not to drill right through the front of the headstock. That Those would be two really bad mistakes. Um, so you just got to be careful and also keep the tuners all straight. I like to use this uh, piece of maple and just line them up, you know, against the piece of wood here and just make sure it's nice and straight as I go and uh, just keep everything 
really nice and and this is uh it's just a part of the project that takes a lot of care one good thing to do here is to go ahead and tape up your drill bit um, just in correspondence with the uh, length of the screw you're using also make sure you're not drilling too big a hole for the threads and um, not too small a hole for the shank of the screw that can cause cracks and stuff too I've drilled the first hole here right in the middle of the screw hole in the tuner and um, I've gone ahead and drilled at the full depth to the tape I've established ahead of time and now I'm going to countersink it to avoid crackage of the uh, lacquer just by hand a little bit here and I'm going to go ahead and install this first screw now it's good to keep a little bit of paraffin wax around just to uh, put on the threads to lubricate it as it goes into the wood just to avoid cracking the screw um, you know or causing it to be too hard to drive in it's always good practice to uh, drive these screws in by hand and um, just get them just tight enough uh, don't over tighten them you don't want to strip the wood or crack anything so I'm gonna move on to the next screws is keeping everything lined up and um, I'll show you all how it looks all right, been going uh, across here one at a time just got this hole drilled and chamfered and now it's uh, it's time for the last one so I'm going to set these two tuners back up drill a hole pull that out finish the hole and um, deburr it and uh, have these all screwed together alright they're all set up looking good now I'm going to get these ready uh, to be uh, mounted together, body and neck. Um, I've been working on just cleaning up like the neck mounting holes and making sure there's no paint in there. And um, I'm about to uh, work on some of the stuff on the body. And then uh, we'll mount the uh, neck on there for the first time. Uh, with uh, screws and the plate and everything painted and um, then uh, work on positioning the pick guard which kind of settles nicely around the neck so it's nice to have that all together um, and then just uh, follow along with uh, more assembly time to uh, mount it up with this uh, genuine fender neck plate and screw kit Oh, and also uh, definitely wax those screws when you put them in. That's uh, they're pretty big, and it's it's a good idea to lubricate them. All right, heck yeah. Let's let's position this pick guard. Man, that looks magical. That is just awesome. Well, now I'm gonna work on carefully uh, poking pilot holes for the uh, pick guard screws and uh, gonna start to uh, put everything together. I've got the bridge pickup ring in place. Now it's time to poke pilot holes for these genuine fender pick guard screws. And an additional genuine fender part is these vintage style strap buttons. Really cool looking and traditional and have a rounded uh, top edge there and uh, I always like to put felt washers under uh, under strap buttons just to avoid uh, cracking and rattling and stuff and uh, I got these at Stuart McDonald uh, they're made by Brown's Guitar Factory and uh, they're gonna be really nice under there so I'm gonna drill a couple holes in the right spots and uh, go ahead and install these. And I wanted to pull the neck off one last time to make sure everything's clean under there and it gave me a chance to drill this uh, strap button hole more easily uh, since it's real close to the neck kind of how it's angled uh, when you're drilling it. But I've got the holes for the strap buttons all drilled and deburred and now it's time to uh, go ahead and screw them in there. Wow that looks fantastic. looks great too. 
Cool. Those are going to be important. All right, cool. Now it's time to install the crown jewels in this thing. A couple Seymour Duncan humbuckers. A uh, JB, which is like a really cool high output. Um, Jeff Beck pickup. Um, you know, some of the description. Um, you can find some good videos of people demoing these online. Um, and then a uh, 59, which is like a uh, PAF. It's There it says, smooth and warm. It's like a patent applied for. Um, so that's going to be really cool. I wanted to put that in the uh, um, neck position uh, to give it a nice warm tone in the neck. And then uh, this in the bridge for that lead tone. And also, this is kind of a replica of the uh, Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page uh, telly. Um, so the JB is just fitting. And it's a 59 replica at the same time. That, that instrument being a 59. So that just seemed uh, appropriate all around. So I'm going to mount them in there and then uh, wire them up. One important thing to do with the wiring is uh, to run a uh, ground wire. Um, so this one is soldered in with all the other ground wires, uh, both to the back of the potentiometers and uh, one end of the volume potentiometer here. Um, but you want to run one of those to the bridge to get rid of uh, hum. And um, what I'm going to do for that is just loosen the bridge up, pick it up a little, and slide this wire under it, kind of where this part of the original bridge pickup route was. I can just slide it right in there and tuck this wire out of the way, um, and that will uh, that will ground that and keep it from uh, buzzing um, when, when it's plugged into an amp. All right, so I'm working on installing the bridge pickup and its ring here, and. Um, these rings have a little bit of angle built into them. So this would actually be a neck position ring on a Les Paul. And if you can tell, they're tapered um, kind of to, to lean in one direction. And with this Tele guitar, I just feel like that's really not necessary. So what I've done is I've taken this one and um, block sanded it uh, down pretty much flat. So... Um, hopefully that's going to work out really nicely, but if not, I always have this one, um, which is angled. Uh, this pickup actually came with the ring that is flat, um, but it has kind of a matte finish, which looks cool, but um, I, I want to go with the gloss and also the, uh, the hole for the pickup on this uh, included one is just a little bigger. Um, I believe it's for a covered pickup, you know, like the neck position pickup. Um, so um, it's a nice ring. I'm gonna hold on to it. And um, it's made specifically to fit the trim bucker, but I believe it's for a covered one. So I think this one will just fit a little better. Um, but this is one of the things that can can be changed at any time. Um, so I'm going to set it up with this one, and uh, I think that's going to be pretty nice. All right, got the bridge pickup attached to the ring. Boy, those long springs are really wound up in there, but I figure I'll just keep their uh, total length without trimming them just uh, to ensure this thing's really stable and not moving around in the ring. But I'm just going to feed this wire through the hole and uh, install the ring on the uh, in the body. All right, looking super cool. Now I just need to mount the neck pickup in the pick guard and install that. All right, I've laid the pick guard and neck pickup in there. Got the wire pulled through and uh, going to screw the pick guard down. Cool. Now it's time to wire the pickups up. And I've got both sets of pickup wires uh, ran into the control cavity here and just got to solder it up to the switch and ground it to the back of the potentiometer and 
uh, install everything. All right, so I trimmed the uh, insulation that held all five wires together back a little bit. Starts out like that. And then pulled these off and just shrank some heat shrink around these three. And then these two are going to go off, instead of going to the switch, they're going to go to the bottom of this potentiometer and solder on with all these other grounds. All right, so I've got one pickup soldered in. And um, now I'm uh, working on the next. I trimmed a little of the length off of the wire um, just because I won't need uh, as much. It's really close. It's the bridge pick up there. Um, but just so I don't, you know, paint myself into a corner, I've, I've stuck a little bit extra wire in there. Um, and... Um, just to make sure I don't cut it too short. So I'm going to work on uh, routing this and uh, soldering it in. And then we'll uh, check this thing out. Cool. Well, I reckon I've got everything wired in. Uh, pretty much how I drew it out. Um, usually when you go to actually wire something, you, you'll change how things are grounded. So um, I ended up grounding to the tone potentiometer um, and instead of this ground jumper going like that I actually soldered it in to this terminal on the volume potentiometer and just jumped it like that it's made it a little easier and I kind of switched sides for the uh, for the switch but um, uh, this is my little connector here um, kind of for positive output but got a uh, black red and white soldered on there and uh, same for the other side um, didn't want to get anything too hot but wanted to make sure all the solders were nice and shiny um, but uh, the fun part's gonna be testing everything worked on this solder a bit um, whenever you uh, solder to the back of a potentiometer, you see I burnt that a little bit, but it's okay. Um, use flux, so some stuff like that. Um, it just helps the solder stick to surfaces. And uh, you have to get the back of these pretty hot for it to be a good solder. But you don't want to melt them. Um, Another thing is just put them in some weird odd position. So I've got them uh, just off of zero position, um, which I figure won't be a common position, just in case something on the inside gets burned or melted. Um, but um, it's all soldered up. Now I've got to fit all these wires into that little space and uh, screw the cover on, but not before mounting the jack in position. Man, that's a lot of stuff in there. Did get the jack nice and tight, though. And uh, also, in case you were wondering, yes, I did mean to put the volume potentiometer up here. Um, not where Fender originally put them, but um, that's uh, that's just kind of part of this build. Um, putting the switch back here, tone, and volume. So... Time to stick a couple screws in there, and then this thing will be looking awesome. Here's the first fun test. Going to check all the switch positions and um, knob positions and all that. So, um, I guess first thing is, um, it's in middle position. See if everything works. Alright, turn the volume up. Cool. All right. And I just like to do this before I put the strings on, um, just in case I have to pull pickups out or anything. Make sure this works. Good. Perfect. 
And we know the volume works because it wasn't doing anything when I first turned it on. Um, and we can even test the tone. <clears throat> so... Yeah, you can tell a the difference there. Perfect. Cool, so it all checks out. Time to string this thing up. And one more thing. I forgot to talk about the uh, tricky wiring I did. So, um, here it is in the bridge position. You can hear out of both coils. Nothing out of the neck. Put it in the middle. Got it here. Got it here, but not there. And so the way I've wired this, um, when it's in the middle position, and again, I can show you the neck. Um, when it's in the middle position, I've just got single coils, kind of like an original telly. So um, I just wanted to try that sound out with this thing, and uh, I think it'll be pretty cool. The uh, middle telly position is a good sound. Um, both humbuckers going is also a great sound, so... All it takes is a little soldering, and uh, and you can uh, get that going too. So I'm gonna stick some knobs on this thing and uh, string it up. And uh, there's one more uh, very daunting task to do um, as it's being strung, and I will show you all that when we get to it. Sweet. Super clean. And of course, got to throw some 10s on it. 1046 Ernie Ball regular slinkies. 59 top loader bridge. I'm going to choose to string it right through the front. It's first note. It's first chord. Now that I've had a chance to put both these strings on and make sure everything is very nicely centered up, um, it is now time to install one more genuine fender part, the string retainer tree. Um, what I need to do is rest it over the strings and um, in 59, they were putting them right below the A string tuner here. And so I'm going to line it all up, um, start my pilot hole, pull the strings off, these two, just to be able to get to everything, and um, fully install the string tree, and, um, and then continue stringing this thing up. All right, I have drilled the hole, moved the strings over, finished the hole, and uh, countersunk it a little bit to avoid cracking the lacquer. And uh, now it's just time to uh, wax up the screw and install the hardware. Put it all in there, got it nice and snug so this doesn't spin around, but also uh, you don't want to over tighten that, it'll crack the lacquer pretty readily. So uh, it's looking good. And uh, now it's time for uh, three more strings. All right. here but 
but uh, the functions work. It's a thing. One final little detail I'd like to do is um, I'd like to grind the bottom of this uh, saddle height screw down so that it doesn't dig into the palm when playing this thing. So I'm just going to grind the bottom a little bit, polish it, and uh, stick it back in there um, and uh, put that height right back where it, where it is now. Sweet. Got it all ground down and uh, out of the palm. y'all enjoyed this series i certainly have enjoyed building this thing and uh i'm really stoked for my dad to play it i'm gonna be giving it to him for christmas tomorrow and uh i hope y'all all have an awesome christmas and uh it's probably christmas or after christmas when you're watching this but i hope y'all all have a merry one anyway and i'll uh, see y'all soon i should be back at you with some more uh nova build content and uh plenty of other uh automotive shenanigans so uh, stay tuned, and I'll, uh, I'll keep you all filled in with all the cool stuff. Thanks again for watching.